Today we're going to have a look at the digestive system from mouth to anus, or in other words, we're going to make poo. The human digestive system is nine metres long. That's all the way from here to here. So digestion all starts in the mouth, and the first thing that we need is saliva. Now we produce between one and one and a half litres of saliva every day. Not much compared to a cow who produces up to 190 litres of saliva every day. So then that goes into the mouth. Now, the food that we eat is too large for us to swallow, so we need to break that down into smaller pieces, and that's where our teeth come in. Now, if you look at this set of teeth, you can see that the top teeth here have quite a sharp edge. These are called incisors, and we use that sharp cutting edge to cut our food into smaller pieces. And I've got a pair of scissors to mimic those teeth. So we chop up our food into smaller pieces. A banana. And a chocolate bar. Some oats for my breakfast and a drink of coffee. But as you can see, that's still too big for us to swallow. So we need to grind it down into smaller pieces, and that's where our molars come in, these back teeth, which have the larger surface to grind our food. And for those molars, I have a potato masher. So that food will get mashed up. The saliva contains an enzyme called amylase, which breaks down starch into glucose. So that piece of bread that we've just eaten is now beginning to be digested from a starch into glucose. From the mouth, we swallow our food and it travels down into our stomach. So we scoop out our food and we put it into our bag, which represents our stomach. we have a new enzyme called protease. Protease breaks down proteins into amino acids. So in that goes. The trouble is protease likes to work in acidic conditions. So in the lining of our stomach we have 35 million glands which produce acid. This acid provides the correct pH for the protease to work. The stomach also is a muscle, so the muscles contract and relax, providing a mechanical motion to mix the food and the enzymes all together. From the stomach, the food moves into the small intestine. We've got a small section of type to represent the small intestine, but regularly in the human body, this would be about six metres. So the food travels into our small intestine. And here digestion continues. So we have the same enzymes that we had in our mouth and our stomach. We have lipase and protease doing the same job. But here we have a third enzyme called lipase. Now lipase breaks down our lipids, or our fats, into fatty acids and glycerol. Now, just as the enzymes in our stomach like to have an acidic pH, the enzymes in our small intestine like an alkali pH. So here we need a substance called bile. Bile is a greenish yellow alkaline liquid produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. And that goes into the small intestine to provide the correct pH for our enzymes. It also has a second role, which is to emulsify our fats, or break down our fats from large globules into smaller globules 
to increase the surface area for the lipase enzymes to work on. In the small intestine, we also have absorption of useful nutrients to the body. And this is done by special cells called villi, which allow the nutrients to be absorbed into the bloodstream, just as they come through the holes of the tights in this demonstration. From the small intestine, the undigested food travels into the large intestine. Now this is where water is reabsorbed into the body, along with any salts that the body requires. So the water has been absorbed into the tea towel, and we are just left with the undigested food. From the large intestine, the food travels into the rectum, which is where our faeces is stored before it exits through the anus. So all that's left to do is cut the anus and go for a poo.